How is it going guys? Mark Sagum here and today I'm gonna show you how I record my fingerstyle covers. One question I got asked a lot is how I record my fingerstyle covers. The process of recording might differ from one another. Some people are doing this and some people are doing that. There's no set of rules or standards when it comes to recording. It technically depends on your personal preference. So for today's video, I'm gonna show you my own process of recording, mixing and editing my fingerstyle covers. Okay, so without further ado, let's go right into it. So first, let's talk about the mic position. I'm using a Cardioid condenser mic, the ATR2500 USB condenser microphone by Audio-Technica. This is the only mic that I use ever since I started making videos. This mic has a built-in audio interface. All you have to do is to plug it directly into your computer and you're good to go. So one of the things to keep in mind when placing your mic for recording is that you do not place the mic directly in front of the sound hole. This may seem likely the most intuitive place to put your mic, but putting it directly into the sound hole eliminates the important details of your recordings. This is caused by the drastic frequencies that comes booming out directly through the sound hole. So basically what I do is I place the mic about 12 to 16 inches away from the 12th fret, then I slightly face the front of the mic towards the sound hole. By doing so, we can achieve a balanced tone that enables the mic to pick out more fretted string detail with some touch of the bass frequencies which comes directly from the sound hole. This position is the most reliable way to capture the natural nuances of your guitar. So from there, I started to record my arrangement. I am using Adobe Audition in capturing the sound of the guitar. You can also use other softwares that you prefer. Okay, now that we've finished recording, let's proceed on the next step. Audio Mixing So in editing my audios, I am using two different softwares, the Adobe Audition and the FL Studio. So I'm gonna start off by cleaning the track using Adobe Audition. Let's open the audio that we recorded a while ago. Let's listen to it real quick and then let's try to do some things to make it sound much better. So the effects that we are going to apply are the EQ and compression. First the EQ or the parametric equalizer. Go to the effects rack here at the lower left side, filter and EQ, then click parametric equalizer. This allows us to get rid of the unwanted frequencies from the recordings by turning down frequencies at some points here in the graph. I'm not a professional sound engineer, but with some research, I found out that somewhere around 400 Hz. 800 Hz and around 2000 Hz, there are some unwanted frequencies that we need to reduce. So to do that, turn the QR width to around 40 or so. This will make a narrow shape so that it will only affect a narrow range of frequency. So if you boost the gain, you will see a thin slice up there. So what we're gonna do is drag the frequency up here around 400 to 500 Hz and find the unpleasant distortion like so. So 
here at 397Hz, we can hear unpleasant sound which distorts our track. Now that we find the unwanted frequency, what we gonna do is to turn down the gain for about negative 15 decibels and change the Q or width to about 60. Now, let's do the same thing around 800Hz. The distortion turns out to be around 880 Hz, so we're going to turn that down for around negative 15 decibels and about 30 for the Q or width. Now let's proceed in finding the distortion around 2000 Hz. The distortion turns out to be around 2178 Hz. So let's turn that down for around negative 10 decibels and about 15 for the width. And that's it for the EQ. Let's try to hear the difference. Without EQ, With EQ, so it may seem like there's no big difference. You may need a decent headphones or sound monitor to hear it, but there's a difference. It reduces some of the unwanted frequencies from our tracks. Now, let's proceed to the second effect, the compression. Go to the effects rack, amplitude and compression, then click tube modeled compressor. So what we're gonna do here is to change the ratio about 1.7 is to 1. Then the next step is to adjust the threshold until you can see only two red bars or three here at the meter from the high peaks like so. So basically what it does is it lessening the dynamic range between the loudest and the quietest part of the track. And that's pretty much it for the compression. Now to apply all the effects, hit Ctrl A on your keyboard and click apply here at the bottom of the effects rack. Let's export, click file, export, file, and set the file name for the track. Click Browse to designate your folder. Click OK, then Yes. Now let's proceed to FL Studio to add some reverb. Open FL Studio. Drag our track to the playlist. And set the track channel to 1. Then launch the mixer, click track 1. From the effects rack, load Fruity Reverb 2. And from the preset list, click the venue. So what I do here is I drag the wet meter down to reduce some reverb. And for the dry meter, I also turn down a bit. 
you can experiment in this step. It's more of a personal preference depending on your taste. So what it does is it makes the sound much bigger and brighter. And yeah, once it's done, let's export it to MP3. Click File, Export, MP3 file and save it to your folder. Now, let's compare the raw file versus the final audio. And that pretty much it. That's how I record, mix, and edit my finger style covers. I'm not saying it is the best way to record, but it really works for me, so yeah. Before I end this video, I want to give a shout outs to Paulo Alagao, Wilson Milora, Christian Oliver Vito, John Bell Malinana, Mig Sabaricos, Ronan Salik, James Tolentino, Ren Isaac Tomas. Dan Gopez and Cornelius Pasqua. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more future updates. Keep safe everyone and I will see you guys next time on my next video. Peace.